Hello friends, in this session we will deal with the properties of functional dependencies. So let's take a look on various functional dependency properties that are available with us. So these properties are basically used when we are trying to derive some new dependencies from the existing ones in order to find various closures and in various normalization or key finding questions. So let's start with them. The first one is reflexibility. So reflexibility or reflexivity states that if A goes to A, which is a trivial dependency, actually every uh, attribute can determine itself. So if A determines A, then AB determines A. So this is basically a type of trivial dependency. Trivial basically means that it is very obvious. We do not need to derive it from anything else, right? Next is transitivity. What does transitivity states now? Transitivity states that if x goes to y, if x determines y and y determines z, these are all attributes over here that I'm discussing, x, y, z, a, b, c, everything is an attribute. So if x determines y and y determines z, then we can say that x just determines z transitivatively. So that means x is determining z indirectly through y, right? So we say that x determines z according to transitivity. Fine. This is transitivity. Then we move on to splitting. What is splitting now? Splitting says that if we are given with x goes to yz, then that means that x goes to y and x goes to z also holds. That means if I say x determines y and z completely, then as you can uh, easily make out from uh, how I have described it, we can also say that x determines y and x determines z. So again now this splitting on the right hand side cannot be uh, taken as the splitting on the left hand side. What I mean is, if I say AB goes to C, that is AB together determines C, then I cannot say that A determines C and B determines C. This is because over here AB forms a candidate key which is a combined or a composite candidate key. What I mean by this is that A and B are together in combination are able to determine C. Right. Uh, so A alone cannot determine C, B alone cannot determine C. If I have to explain it with an example, I would say, let's say I have these records A, B and C. Then I would take an example as 1 2 goes to 1, then 1, 3 goes to 2, and I would say, mm, uh, okay, um, 2, 3 goes to 3. Now, what is happening over here? Over here, if I say um, C has unique values but in accordance to a combination of A and B. Right. If I try to map C with only A through left hand side, if I say A determines C, that would be wrong. Why? Because I have two values of 1 present in A pointing to two different values of C. So 1 goes to 1 and 1 also goes to 2. So therefore, a dependency does not hold from this direction. Right. What I mean from this direction is, I can say that C determines A. Can I say that C determines A? Yes, because all the values of C are unique over here. So 1 goes to a unique value of A. 1 is not going to any other value of A. So, I can say C determines A and in fact C also determines B for this particular example. Right. So, but we cannot say the vice versa thing. We cannot say that A determines C or B determines C. But we can say that the combination of A and B is always unique when mapped to the values of C. So, we can say AB combinedly determine C. 
right? So this was the concept of the various dependencies when I say that x determines y or y determines z. Now let's move on to the next one. So we are now on the union one. So what does union states? Union states that if I've been given with two dependencies, x determines y and x determines z, then I can say that x determines y z. So basically I'm just combining the right hand side because there is an AND clause over here, right? So you can say it is basically the reverse of your splitting property, just uh, reviewed a second before. So next is the augmentation property. What does augmentation state now? Augmentation is if I've been given with x goes to y, then I can augment an extra attribute on both the sides of this dependency. I can say that zx goes to zy. Now, this may be required when I am trying to derive some other dependency wherein I require this zx attribute on left hand side, right? So, let's, uh, let's move to the next one which is pseudo transitivity. Pseudo transitivity states that if x goes to y and yz goes to w, if both these are given as true, then we can say that xz goes to y. So, it would have been transitivity if I would have said this, that x goes to w, right? But now I have appended an attribute over here and now it has become pseudo transitive. So if I just visualize it like this, it would be x goes to y. Then I append something extra over here, yz, which goes to w. Then I take this part and I say xz goes to w, xz goes to w. So this might give you a better clearer picture of this. So this was all for the various types of properties of dependencies which are used in various forms to derive some other indirect dependencies. I'll see you all in the next session where I'll be dealing with the recoverability of schedules, another important topic of databases. Thank you. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe the channel if you like the various videos and please keep following the channel for new upcoming videos. Thank you.